just found out that a rice cooker worth tens of thousands is made like this. After watching the entire production process, I finally understood why some rice cookers are expensive yet still loved and sought after by many. So is it truly worth the price or are consumers being fooled? Today, let's take a look at what makes it so special. Before making the core components, the craftsman first processes the simplest part of the rice cooker, the cover. Although relatively simple, since the cover is exposed to a humid environment for long periods, it must ensure both sealing and protection of the electrical circuits. This makes material choice and structural design extremely important. Two metal plates are stamped onto the cover for protection. A reinforcement plate is installed underneath to enhance its structural strength and provide additional protection for the wiring. The material is thick and solid, and after fastening the screws into each hole, another important component is installed, the positioning rubber ring. Its special design allows it to fit precisely with the rice cooker, regardless of the pot's depth. After assembling the cover, the next focus is on the core part of the rice cooker, the motherboard. High-end rice cookers often use dual IGB designs, which differ from standard PCB circuits. Both allow the rice to dance inside the pot, but the result is completely different. The principles behind this will be explained later. The secret lies in the tightly packed coils, which are crucial for its operation. The coils are arranged at multiple angles, like stars in the sky. Once connected to the circuit board, they enable e-heating and electromagnetic heating, using electric current to generate magnetic fields, creating multiple small eddies for all-around heating. In contrast, traditional methods like griddles only heat the pot's bottom. After connecting and securing the motherboard to the rice cooker's base, the coils are inverted and installed. The heat module is wrapped in an insulating film and secured with screws. Now, the internal structure of the rice cooker is roughly formed, but this is just the first assembly. Even a small rice cooker has many critical components. After testing the circuits and ensuring everything works correctly, a retractable power cord is installed. Without it, the rice cooker would be useless. After organizing the complex wiring and making everything neat, a metal bracket is mounted to support the pot while also protecting the coils. Due to the tens of meters of wiring in a small space, which generates high temperatures, a silent cooling fan is also added. The fan's quality directly impacts the cooker's performance. With the internal structure fully assembled, the exterior is now ready to be put together. The plastic casing is assembled next. After attaching insulation pads to both sides of the casing, workers invert it onto the pot, fastening it in place with screws in the designated holes. After that, they plug the screw holes with protective caps, and the completed cover with its display screen is connected to the body, forming a complete rice cooker. However, the assembly isn't finished yet. Workers still need to install a circuit board in the tight space filled with wiring, which drives the display screen on the rice cooker. Once the driver is installed and covered with a protective casing, this pricey rice cooker is finally completed. What makes it stand out is the even heating, which ensures the rice is fully steamed. The rice grains are plump, fluffy, and delicious. A heating mimics the principle of cooking rice in a traditional iron pot over a wood fire, which explains why rice cooked over a wood fire in rural areas tastes so much better. 